Okay, so we are live now. Uh, very good afternoon, everybody. I think there's something which has been there, you know, uh, and most of the things that uh, keep on coming in mind. One thing good has afternoon. been that a lot of us, when we were youngsters, there are two or three dreams that we had, you know. Uh, one was either we would uh, enter Bollywood and become a star. Like it was the thing to be, you know, to be a star and with all the glamour and people following you and look, all the camera clicking you, uh, we thought, wow, that is it. Or we thought we'll enter the corporate world, become the top guy, all the jet flying, the big hotels, the press conferences, the television, you know, and all those millions of people following you. And these were some of the dreams that we had. Over time, you know, I think I've been... Uh, in the corporate world and I moved up um, uh, to how things have been and um, been, made this company, heading it now for about uh, eight years as MD. And then I see Bollywood also and I have a lot of friends there. Uh, one of them obviously, the big producer is my classmate and he, he's also on the show today. And I see the actors, the ones who really made it and they have all this following and the uh, cameras and, and people you know, are chasing them. So people who have achieved in the life what they thought and everybody's dream is, why is it so that they're not very happy? Most of them. Uh, why is it so that something they find amiss in the life? No? So today with my friends here on Tea and Tales, we have this conversation, a very, very interesting conversation. We got a lot of you youngsters there who are watching the show. You have this dream, you have the aspiration. Let's learn that in this journey, how do you not only fulfill your dreams, but you remain happy and you remain excited all the time. And for this, let me begin with, I have Vivek Singhania, a very interesting man. Uh, as I said, he's my um, friend for 40 years. We were in school together. He went on to London School of Business, did his MBA there. Became the youngest CEO of Pantaloon at the age of 27 years. But they said no to hell with it. He wants to become a movie producer, produce a lot of lovely movies. And recently I talked to him, it's all into spiritualism. I said, okay, Vivek, no? all the stars, all the glamour, all the young CEO and then London School of Business and now you come to spiritualism, all good with you, my friend? He says, yeah, yeah, all good. So I got him in the show, I said, if we are going to have tea and tears, Vivek has to be there. Now, next I have uh, Jan with me. Jan, again, if you uh, know, I when we had a get-together and I suddenly heard uh, uh, Gayatri Mantra on uh, piano, <laughs> And I, looked, yes. uh, I see Jan on the piano and she was you know, playing the Gayatri when singing it. A British actress, a coach, a singer, into Broadway, you would name it. Anywhere that you can think about in this world, an actor, a glamour world, uh, somebody could be. Jan has been there, done that, been there, no? And an uh, amazing friend of us. We thought, let us get her on the show today. And then we have another amazing uh, actor. Uh, he has done a movie. Vikram Singh. He's done about 20 movies and in four different languages, including Bollywood. And you must have seen him in Hero Panthi, one of the most popular uh, film, uh, Punjabi hero. You go to Punjab, no? people are dying just to have him uh, next to them get clicked. No? And then we have the man, Dr. Samir uh, Parekh. No? Uh, he is an eminent psychiatrist and is the director of the Department of Mental Health and Behavioral Sciences for Fortis Healthcare. Uh, he has the man who is the, as the key to all the questions to ask. No? So we have for you from Bollywood, a producer, an actor, a British actress, uh, and a psychiatrist, and obviously me. And like I said, tea and tales, the cutting chai, Malai market. Let's start the conversation. No? There, cheers, Raja on tea. Now, that's the difference. In Punjab, drink tea. What's up with Yes, and I'm in Punjab right now. Right now, I'm in Punjab only. <laughs> so, if it's not a liter of my favorite tea, copper. <laughs> See, copper is very good to have water tea. Doctor will be uh, agreeing with it, I'm sure. Copper is good, copper glass. <laughs> so, we start with uh, Vivek, you know. Vivek, uh, just a, a conversation from your yeah. side. You studied in some of the best schools, then you went to London School of Business, became the youngest CEO, movie producer. You have seen it all. What has your experiences been like. of this glamour world? What has your learning been that you have seen? And then all your friends you have seen all across, no? they have gone through depression, they have gone through success, they have gone through failures. So the biggest stars and the highest, <laughs> no? 
they have no also ended up taking the life so what has been your experiences vivek and what all have you seen let's let's hear from you and let's learn from you you know to begin with yeah it's a you know it's a it's a uh, psycho fancy and people who come close to you the moment you start rising and when you reach the top obviously you have all the wrong people around you it's very difficult to keep them away in in some cases because you know i've worked with a lot of very big stars and i've known them very very closely so i realized that some of them had parents who you know these were star children also but fortunately had parents who knew what can happen to a young star so they would protect them from these psychopaths and such people and uh, uh, turn them into the right uh, direction but sometimes we you know for people who come in from outside this glitz and glamour and they attract the wrong people and they fall into that trap those are people who are uh, you know exploiting them misleading them for personal gain and that happens a lot also you know i mean it, it, that aside uh, any immediate like oh, you get so much difficult for anybody to digest because over here in, in, the, in the film world in the glamour you know there's overnight fame success money everything the world is at your feet everybody wants you mentally working and shooting and uh, pleasing their fans but any but this uh, is so yeah sometimes you know if you have the right people around you uh, people who have experienced before you and know what can happen they can hold you back they can guide you and they can protect you but you know everybody can't can't get that so what happens in that case i think uh, the signals were low lost vivek but the point you were saying is in a very short time you get a lot of money you get a lot kind of, of success is you have lot yeah. of these people who are no um, after you and then nobody guide you at a very young age and that has a huge issue on your mental health uh, of totally it sounds clear to you have you seen such cases where no a lot of success fame and what people have been trying very hard to reach and when they reach there then they come in lost and then they lose you know uh, their peace and they lose their happiness after getting what every uh but he is desiring to get uh, have you seen such cases dr parekh and what, what's your thought on this see i think what we need to understand and appreciate that human being is a human being now whether that human being has to be in the entertainment industry or health or health or my corporate career or my government or any sector or scope for that matter every brand every occupation comes with its own sets of challenges and benefits that's what we need to understand i mean today as most as my healthcare providers had in these covid times i know what my colleagues in healthcare are going through i find it remarkable that you know a doctor leaves home goes to work comes back to the home knowing very well that i may be a carrier and the emergencies that comes with it or for that matter when you look at sports the same argument can come for sports as well you are a young 18 year old prodigy picked up for the state level or the national level team picked up in a bigger team a private club and suddenly a bad season it all goes away i think we need to appreciate that most branches will have their own occupational hazards so as to say yes some special aspects of careers which are more in the public domain they have an added pressure because the highs and lows happen in the public domain because the adaptation to the indifference happens in the public domain and more often than not what we see is how we end up seeing people as you know so if you are a comedian or playing more comedy roles then people end up feeling that well you would always be a cheerful happy person not realizing that behind that mask is a human being with the same vulnerabilities like you and i so i think that's that's the key aspect when it comes to entertainment because the portrait self on the screen is actually not the real self and that's where the empathy gets lost in the adaptation of the followers 
And in today's times, what has been more challenging is how the advent of social media has been. That every next moment has become like a moment of an examination for a board going student almost. Yeah, Your one tweet can end up <laughs> bringing uh, challenges to you and Insta post can end up bringing a challenge to you. Everything has become so instant, so over the top, so exaggerated and highs and lows that could have been a Friday to Friday or in every few months are now happening every few minutes because of how the societal communication patterns have also changed. But I think my point on a very important note Let's not look at individuals or individual career choices. Understand that mental health needs to be a priority. One in five people in the world will have a mental health issue. Depression is the single largest illness in the world. 300 million people globally suffer from it. Suicides are preventable. Is a because we don't prioritize mental health, we struggle. No, I think very strong point, be Doctor. Corporate India, be it sports, be it entertainment, whoever it is, mental health outcomes need to be prioritized if we want to value life. No, very strong point, Doctor. In fact, I was mentioning this to uh, our education minister also. I said our entire education is based on either you know, your physical um, trainings or you have a, a book uh, which you are mugging through, but there's not a single uh, talk on mental health and how people have to react to situation which they stressed out. Now, I think a very good point. We'll come back to you again. But let me go to Raja Vikram Singh now, a star who made it big, you know, the dynamic, that uh, pusher, and has done so many movies, you name it. Like, um, as I said, uh, and at the peak of things, do you face all this, Raja Vikram Singh, what we just discussed, you know, what Vivek spoke out of his experience, what Dr. Uh, Parik uh, Yes. Uh, so do you face all this? Yeah, I totally you, agree. What, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you, I have a lot of experience to share in this platform. Like, uh, as Mr. Vivek said, I agree with him also and with Dr. Parik also. As he said about mental health, yes, which is the most important aspect, has to be worked on and taken by every individual. Also, the government should work towards every individual's uh, priority for mental health development, you know. And uh, I've come to this industry 15 years ago. I have no godfather, nothing. I, have, I had nobody here in Bombay, in Mumbai. And I kept on working. At times, I used to feel low. At times, I used to feel, go through a lot of trauma because this uh, nepotism as a thing is going on right now um, uh, in Bollywood, which is 100% existing there. And, it, and I have gone through that, but but fortunately, I've been very strong mentally, as, as we speak on mental health, very strong. That if, if, if uh, I have to just be after some big banner and keep on begging them, give me a role. When I did some few films, what happens is all the actors, we want to work on top five or ten banners of film industry. Why? Because their marketing is huge, their cinema supports them. See, there's a big... In all this topic, whatever go is going on in India right now, as Dharma Productions, Yashraj movies, or this, or these banners, that they are the main killers of Sushant Singh, this poor actor who died. You know what? Uh, also, they're missing on the point is the exhibitor. Mr. Vivek will agree with me. The exhibitor, the cinema chain owners, they will not release a movie which is not properly, which is not of top 10 banners. They will not do it. So how, if I'm a newcomer in Bollywood, my movie is coming with a normal banner, and some producer is betting on me and just put some money and launch me. Who will see me if there's no cinema? You know, how will you buy a surf Excel if there's no departmental store? It's not kept there. How will you know how will you know how this Chavam Prat is doing? You know, uh, of this kind of commodity. We all are commodities. Actors are we are commodities. We are living commodities. So the point here is exhibitors is also one of the main cause for a lot of it's all connected. As as we speak here, it's all connected, the whole chain, starting with nepotism, starting with uh, the actors like us who come and want to make on their own and they want to be big in industry. We, 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 I had potential. That's the reason I was getting work again and again all the time. There was a point when I was tired of doing movies of normal producers because they have a limit strength. We all have to grow, right? So what happened? 
after hero panthi i did a big movie with a big banner i was a main uh, i played negative role in that antagonist it was a super hit film i was a print i got huge fan base because of that so that banner i got the movie but lot of auditions their politics was happening with me but still because of my caliber i got that because the director wanted to cast me henceforth i don't know what happened tiger shroff being from industry his father uh, zaki shroff uh, from a big family influential family of bollywood he kept on working on big movies back to back same banner was repeating but i was never repeated by them so this was getting on my head but as i i, I said i agree with doctor mental health so it, i had such a strong thing i said i don't care after some point i gave up on asking work from people exactly after one year of hero panthi i decided now i will create work for people i will be a producer now you know i don't have to just wait and cry that i'm not getting movies of top banners in spite of giving him movies so i thought fair enough you don't want to cast me i'm totally agree okay with it you you don't have any scientific formula to make a movie you doing the same whatever creativity you have i know the formula i do my own thing luckily i produce i became a producer with a punjabi film that was 25 kille 25 kille and it was a tremendous success six film fair awards five ptc awards so that's how i never gave up see when does a person don't give up when he has a strong men- mental health about himself that yes he can do it i i work like that so i totally agree what vivek ji said i totally agree what doctor is saying raja i love your spirit you not only fought it <laughs> got a good movie you have beaten down and you said now yes. i create opportunities for people and you made it big again yeah. no that is the yes. kind of mental health which is required it is not about what role are you in it is not about what kind of movies are you in it is not about what kind yeah. of you are it's not about like, the kind of doctor you are it's how you think it's how you think when you're beaten down and with this i come to my friend jan no across the world she has been uh, britain uk new york broadway india what kind of mental health to she be having to go through all the variety of things and whenever i see <laughs> yeah. her is super cheerful no super excited all are learning something new jan your experiences of this glamour world of across the world no different parts and how do you put this up and what is your thinking did you suffer um, uh, huge pressure did you buckle down did you bounce back no your views jan your stories Jan, you are mute, so you have to unmute yourself. Yes, I am muted. Yes, I. It's saying that you can hear me. I can hear can you. you. Hear me? Yeah, okay, I can. lovely. Um, so yes, I, I I totally resonate with everything that everybody is saying. Um, what we need to understand is that if you're an actor and you want to perform, these kinds of people are searching seeking soul people i think and uh, therefore they're always looking for something always looking to better themselves play an, a larger role play a different role do something to master something you know and um we as an actor we suffer a lot of um rejection we we go for parts we don't get the parts we we suffer the rejection constantly and i think that has a very very deep effect on our psyche um having said that we're we're tenacious people i'm certainly tenacious i've acted all over the world but what has struck me is that the people that act and actors performers are very very sensitive people very deep people and so they they're very affected by the, their outside world and what people think of them um it's very difficult not to be affected by what people think of you when your work is about making people think <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah yes so it's it's a double edged coin you know it's a double edged sword um it's like opening the third eye to perform and then you must close the third eye when you're finished otherwise things get inside and affect you i'm speaking from the performing point of view you know from a very deep thing um i think um society has become obsessed with celebrityism 
with celebrities and wanting to be like them and live like them and wear the same clothes as them and live in the same houses as them. And I think that's a little bit of a problem now, the world over. Yeah. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, I think, uh, but how do you remain enthusiastic every time I see you? No, whenever we meet you, always super excited, super happy. How do you do that? I uh, love to improvise. I love to throw myself into things. And I rely very much on Mother Nature and the source and God and everything. As crazy as that sounds. I really do rely on those things because they are the source of performing. You have to dig very deep in your soul to be a good performer. You really have to. And that is the sacrifice that you pay to do it. If you want to touch people's hearts and you want to move people and create, you have to be willing to sacrifice. Brilliant, Jan. I think that's a very good answer. I mean, Dr. Parikh, Dr. Parikh, you heard and you said that mental health is very, very critical for each of us. And uh, we all go through our traumas. You saw how you know, my friends here, uh, when they were down and out, they still you know, came back, bounced back. There are some who can't do it, some who miss it out, some who get lost. Some are finding spirit, some get into spiritualism, you no, know, and some again make it very big and they get more evolved. So what are your tips, like for people who are listening, no, uh, and uh, people you know, who are uh, here in the show, uh, what are your tips for the intelligent, sensitive people, you know, who would uh, uh, be succumbing to depression? What should they do so they can have a much happier life? What are the pitfalls that you have learned over time and written so many books on different topics, Dr. Parikh, an expert and a master in this field. We want to hear from you the crux of all your research and and the way you have looked into it. What should you tell us that this is what you should guys should do? What would it be? I think let's split this in two parts. Uh, one is about our life per se, and one is about the mental health clinical problems. So I'll go do the second part first, which is the clinical problems. We need to understand mental health disorders are medical illnesses. And the word medical here is very important. So like you have diabetes, where insulin is an issue, in depression, serotonin is an issue. That's a reality. What do you do when you have diabetes? You go to an expert. The expert tests your levels, tells you, okay, exercise, diet, medications. You go for depression to an expert, the expert will say you, maybe medications, some counseling, some lifestyle, social support. Essentially, it's evidence-based, clinical. The only way to ensure that the mental health problems can be resolved is by seeking help timely. That's one thing which we can do as individuals and family, unmute yourself, talk to someone. But the other side, and this I'm speaking more from the point of view of our country, we have a huge deficit of experts. We now need to figure out a way to do the last mile connectivity because experts are largely more towards the urban metro areas. So, as we go further into our country, the expert ratio starts falling down, which is why stigma happens, which is why people don't get help because the help is actually not accessible. So you create robust public-private partnership, use Digital India like what you are doing right now. The hundreds of thousands of people who will watch this, would some of them would probably end up giving value. Some of them will become mental health advocates. Some of them will become more sensitive sensitive to people around them. Some of them will now allow people to talk about it. Like we still do not have easy conversations on mental health. There is still stigma around it, whether we like it or not. It's changed, but it's a long way to go. We bring corporate sector in it. Corporate sector needs to start raising their hand up and make mental health outcomes a priority. Beyond your EBITAs, beyond your PNLs, where is the mental health outcome? So that's what we can do when it comes to the disease. We should have more helplines. We should have work on life skills in schools, in colleges. We should create spaces where people can take care. Coming to the first one, which is what we can do as individuals for our own selves. So these are my tips for you. Life constantly changes. Don't be rigid. Be willing to change with it. So you constantly adapt. The three examples that you gave of the panelists here, you were willing to change. 
life brought a challenge you brought in a change because change is the only constant and you don't have a choice around it so be willing to change support systems will always be the key for us invest in relationships if you have meaningful relationships in your worst moments there will be people standing next to you you won't feel isolated or lonely for that your third tip is communication open open honest transparent communication you know just reflect on this when mankind's language started it started with symbols then complex words and language came we are going back to symbols we don't use full lines anymore we use phrases we use abbreviations for laughing you say lol <laughs> how sad can it get that we can't <laughs> even laugh and we'll just cry for lol i mean so unfortunate you use emoticons which have a generic meaning and no personal meaning it's like we sending each other hearts and the heart is a heart but what does that heart mean you know the clue it generalizes it so bring honest open communication next focus on your attitude that's the core which is a positive belief system you can either have a negative mind frame or a positive it's up to you if you constantly filter for the positive you'll be able to you know keep going through the highs and lows of life have an effective healthy good lifestyle where you value breaks and a fun if you don't enjoy if you can't have fun you cannot be a successful person it's not possible the art of unwinding and the art of pleasure and enjoying is equally important the next one there is nothing unemotional about work work is as emotional as it gets so true engagement is emotional engagement so you can't have that objective oh i'm at work and i'll have a different hat the hat is the thing you spend most of your time at work so work friends work colleagues that for define your uh, stress coping skill right and the last thing to do is if there is a problem in life unmute yourself talk to someone friends family doesn't matter everybody doesn't need to go to an expert but seek help you know if you are the best batsman in the world and you are getting out to bouncers you will still go to your coach and ask if you are still the best in the world that's the thing so these are the tips implement them so that you know we just need to not a man doctor has focused so many people and that was so, such a comprehensive no uh, summary of the tips love each of it in fact there are some uh, personal uh, examples i have and that's why i'm smiling so much I remember one of the offices when I joined as a head, and I was addressing the team there. I told them, "If you can't have fun at work, you can't be happy in life." So after my speech, uh, my next in command came and told me, "This is not how it is, Tapan." I said, "Why? Work is work. You can't be having fun at work. Work is serious business. Fun can be later." And I looked at him and I said, "This is what he taught the people here. No doubt they are smiling." So I told him, "Don't do this, my friend. We'll have fun, and we'll see what happens." And we actually grew 400% in the year we had fun. No, I think a lot of people miss this. They think work is a serious place, and I love that statement of yours. Second attitude. No, why the P is precious for me? In college, I failed. No, a lot of people have talked about it in the first year. Today, people get poor marks; they get so upset. I failed in a lot of subjects, and then I asked my friends. It was like that. अच्छा तू कितने में fail किया? मतलब तीन subject में तू कितने में चार के ठीक है ये भी देखी जाएगी चल चाय पीते हैं सो आई थिंक नो इट वाज फाइन एंड देन वी केम बैक अगेन एंड And this is why in the panel I have so many special people who made it so big in their life, you know, had setbacks, bounced back, and redefined themselves. This is a critical part. Any question, Vivek, Jan, uh, uh, Raja, Vikram, whatever, somebody have for me. Very happy to answer. It was a two-way conversation. I can't, you know, have one. Yeah, yeah, just sure. Vivek, you want to ask something? <laughs> Chapan, I'm having difficulty hearing. It's very distorted. Okay. Yeah, distorted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No worries then. Then I think if we are not able to know get clear about some signal issues, I think we will end this show with the guy three man from Jan, which I have always. Let's do it. Now, <laughs> at the base, you no. Know, uh, 
speaks it and the way she plays it. Oh they are God. over to you. A small bit from our side. A guy three months now on your side. Before you have to it. correct me when I go wrong. <laughs> oh, Jenny, don't go wrong. Every time you're right, you know. You have the most positive way to end a discussion like this, no? Please the correct me. Humbo por burvaswaha tatsavite vurinya maha parigo devya swahi mahi yo yo nan pratsodeya Amazing, Jen. Thank you very much. Very amazing debate. Amazing. Thank you, Jen. Thank you very and, much. And uh, brilliant. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, yeah, I think of... Uh, we have a few people who have dropped out. Okay, no worry. But uh, thank you, Vikram, and thank you, everybody. Thank you for being on the show. Had a great time, great conversation. Thank you very much.